Welcome to the final episode of my Unica playthrough of East Origin. Going all the way to the end. All the way to the end. We got two boss fights and a lot of cutscenes to go through. So, as soon as we get through this door, we're gonna get it out. Let's get it out! He's been waiting for us. His, of course, is Kishkol. We've met him several times throughout the story. He is the killer of our father. And, uh... He's not the final boss, but he's the final confrontation before the final boss. <laughs> Don't know why that makes much difference, but... Uh, yeah. We're, uh... This is basically... The whole thing is, Unica says her idea of strength and his idea of strength are completely different. And that's pretty true. Unica doesn't have magic. And, uh... She's pretty much just... He's laughing a lot. And... Her idea of strength is to protect those that she deems that needs protecting, <clears throat> and to be strong for the people that sacrificed their lives for her, which would be Roy, her father, and it's really all I can think of. But yeah, real strength comes within. She doesn't need to drive herself mad to get it, and basically Kishkol has accepted demonic powers and driven himself crazy in order to get as strong as he possibly could. He went crazy trying to fight uh, Unica's dad. But, yeah. So we have a fight with Kishkel in his demon form. And this is not a supposed to lose fight. So, we're gonna have Blue Lotus tell us what to do. BL? Kishkel has a large selection of ice-based attacks. He will start the fight by summoning spikes of ice out from him in a V-shaped pattern. If you are standing in front of him you should not get hit and they are easily destroyed by your flame ability. His two other attacks he uses before he reaches half health is a blast of icicles that doesn't do much damage and a quick sweep attack if he is too close to you. Once he reaches half health he gains two attacks. The first he will use quite often as he will summon two ice dragons to chase you around the field. They don't do too much damage, but they will knock you down for a few seconds. The other attack he gains is he will sparkle and then he will summon his V of spikes. Directly after the spikes are summoned a large cluster of spikes will fall from the ceiling in between the two walls of spikes. This move is very hard to dodge, but you can destroy the spikes and move out of the area before the spikes drop. Thank you for that, Blue Lotus. That's, that's the thing about him. And as you can see here, I just use my flame ability the entire time and just shoot at him whenever I can. I'm trying to dodge these uh, things. And there's the, uh, ice spike. That, that's basically his super. Plus, I didn't, t I didn't have Blue Lotus, I should say, talk about that move there. But, as long as you keep moving, you should, do you should dodge it. Not that hard. Not... I, I tend to forget, like, something about this boss fight. Whether it was with, well, not with, like... This, fin this boss before the final boss. I forgot something with Hugo, and I forgot something with, uh, with Unica, it seems. <clears throat> ah. But, we have defeated Kishkol. Maybe. Yeah, we have. I can say for certain that we have, since I have beaten this game. Because, you know, I do post-commentary. So, yeah. We're going to face Kish... Not Kishko. We're gonna go finish the game. 
uh, right around here, though, well, towards the, after, after this cutscene ends, which is, we're talking about different kind of strengths that they have, you're a strange one to be sure, how you were able to win, blah, 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 blah. So, yeah. Towards the end of this, right here, this is death befitting a warrior. I have no regrets. Yay! He has no regrets. So, Kishkel is gone. He just kind of disappears. He's not even like... Oh, and yeah. There's this whole thing. But, right around here, I started having frame rate issues. And so, if you see stuttering, it's because I was having frame rate issues for whatever reason. Like that. Uh, I did not do it, like, uh, it, I dropped down like 5 FPS for whatever reason. And it's not because this place is graphically intensive, because I did it with Hugo and was just fine. It is a cool looking area, though. But, uh... And so basically, what I had to do, the uh, typical tech thing is, while we're going up to our final encounter, I had to, I, I, I saved here, and then I cut, uh, I stopped recording, completely shut down my computer, and uh, turned it back on. And now you see we actually have good frame rate again. And started recording again. Because I went to see this cutscene to see if anything changed. And the frame rate was so bad the cutscene froze. Like, well, like something happened and it was so bad that the, the cutscene froze, the g entire game froze. And so I just. Yeah. But we're here at the final battle. And, uh, Dales is, he's right there, and we're gonna fight him. Where are we? Yeah, so, uh, if you didn't know, if you didn't watch my other one, basically, Dales wants the full power of the Black Pearl. But, the Black Pearl is using a lot of its power to keep Solomon's Shrine afloat. And so, in order to get his full power, we are going, he is going to drop Solomon's Shrine to the ground. Killing however many people are up in Solomon's Shrine. And so... Yeah. Basically, Dales is just like... You're just a little girl. You have no magic ability whatsoever. You can't even touch me. And so now, he's going to show us what it means to be a Darkling. Boom! Blow us up. Erg. Uh-oh. Gah! It ends here, Yudikatova. And so... Against all odds, I made it all the way to the tower summit, but now it's all for nothing. And that's the end of Yes Origins Unica story. GG. Just kidding. JK. So, we have our friends. Ramona, you were supposed to be burying Roy. Did you finish that? I hope so. If he's still... If he is still in that freaking Hall of Reflection, I'm going to be quite upset. You were supposed to go give him a proper burial. Anyways. The goddesses are charging up my father... Uh, Unica's father's sword. And it's all blue. I love this effect right here. And... And... Boom! Giant Blue Phoenix. 
It's it's so simple yet feels so satisfying. Also, I want to bring up a point that before I uh, came to this fight, I forgot to equip. Uh, before I did this recording, right here, uh, that's showing on screen, I forgot to equip the special necklace that, uh, Roy gives you. And you can't equip anything during a boss fight, because you can't pause during a boss fight. So, needless to say, I died once. And, uh, I, I died right at the, on the third phase, and I just failed hardcore. And so, uh, I cut here, and, uh, this is with, this is with the necklace, but I didn't die in this run. So, GG. <laughs> So, uh, this was an all-in-all -all better run for me to show you anyways, because I didn't die at all. I only got hit, like, once during the first phase. But, uh, we're going to have, uh, Blue Lotus explain everything to you. Here we go. Dales has three forms. He will change form each time you drain his health to zero. In the first form, his core is always exposed, and he has four attacks that he will keep throughout all of his forms. The first is he will shoot out ping bullets all over in front of him. You should be able to jump over them and be unharmed. The second is he will send out meteors that will crash into the ground where you are standing. Just keep running to dodge them. The third ability is he will charge a flame in his hand and then send out waves of flames along the ground. There will be a quick indication of where the flames will come out so watch for it and dodge accordingly. The fourth is a giant ice crystal that Dales will send crashing onto where you are standing that will have a large area of effect damaging aura once it lands. Jump out of the area as fast as possible. Once you have brought him to zero health once he will gain a few new abilities and he will guard his core. First off he will guard himself with a blue, green shield, simply use your green ability to damage and destroy it. While this shield is up Dales will have two tornadoes moving around the arena. They shouldn't give you too much trouble, but he will continue the other attacks mentioned before. Once a shield is destroyed Dales will not attack until you take off about one third of his health. That is when the next shield will activate. The second shield will be red, orange and can only be damaged by your red ability. While this shield is up Dales will spawn flaming dragons that will home onto your position along with his other attacks, you should be able to outrun the dragons to avoid damage. The third shield will be yellow and purple and can only be damaged by your yellow ability. With this shield, active Dales will spawn two large purple spheres that will home in towards you and have large explosions following closely behind them. Due to the speed that the balls travel they will take a while to turn around if you dodge them giving you ample time to destroy the boss's shield. Once you destroy the three shields and bring the second form to zero hit points the third phase will start. A new shield will form in front of Dale's core that cannot be damaged by your abilities. Instead you have to destroy the turrets floating around Dale's. Once both turrets are destroyed the shield will fall and you can attack Dales. In this form Dales will gain a few new abilities. First his turrets will shoot out a large dragon to where you are standing. Getting caught by this will teleport you to an area where you are trapped and will take a large blast of energy to the face taking out about half your health. Getting hit by this attack means almost certain failure against the boss. The second attack Dales gains in this form is a large magnetic field that will damage you while inside and pull you towards the center. This ability makes it a lot harder to dodge the dragons just mentioned. The third ability is a giant energy blast that you can dodge although it is quite tough to do so. Activating boost mode is the best way to mitigate the damage from this ability. After the third form goes down Dales is dead for good. Thank you for that, Blue Lotus. 
Uh, yeah. Also, I... Even with the, uh... With the, uh... With the failed attempt, I did not get hit by, uh... His super... Whatever ability that is really dumb, and pretty much if you get hit by it, it's pretty much an automatic loss, even with the, uh... Uh, thing. It has something to do with that. I'm not 100%. He only does it really in his... He only does it in his third form. So, it's either... That or, you know... Whatever. Uh, if you want to see it in action, you can see it in my Hugo playthrough. I do get hit by it once. In my fail attempt that I show. But, yeah. This is the end. We have defeated Dales. He is dead for good. And that is the final boss for Unica. There will actually be one more boss for the third character we will play, which I will play, which I will start the, the Let's Play of next week. And so, uh, we'll have our third and final character. But, Dales, Dales has been defeated. And we, and, and we just win. And yeah, humans, demons, one side of the same coin. Blah, 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 blah. One thing I think it could have done better is had, uh, some sort of, like, different ending, because technically, uh, as, as I stated before, all of these could kind pretty much be canon endings, because they all end with, uh, the goddesses, uh, purifying the black pearl, and being turned to stone and being put underground. The only thing that really changes is who survives. Like, uh, the last, uh, with Hugo, Roy survived. You saw that. He was at the end, and, uh, it, yeah. Roy survived in Hugo's playthrough. He didn't survive in this playthrough. Um, it's kind of, because Epona didn't turn to dust, uh, it's kind of insinuated that Epona survives in this playthrough, but of course she doesn't in Hugo's playthrough. Spoilers if you didn't watch my Hugo playthrough. I don't blame you. I'm just, that's spoilers for you. And so, yeah. Now everything looks all pretty. So I just kind of wanted to give that uh, last big cutscene some of the. It, it's it's quite it's quite pretty. This game is quite pretty. I I like the graphics of this game, even though it's like 16 bit ish with the sprites. But uh, uh, with the the sprites and it's just uh, I wouldn't say six, 16 bit but uh 
It's not like cutting edge COD kind of graphics, but I still appreciate it and what it plan and what it tries to do, and I feel it does it quite well. And yeah, I like I said I quite like this game. If I didn't, I wouldn't be let's playing it, of course. And, uh. This was. Ba uh, this was Unica's story. It's not completely different. There are some parts that are different from others, like Roy dying and stuff like that. It's mostly the gameplay itself that changes, since Unica is melee and. Hugo is ranged. Our third character is going to be melee, but he's actually going to be squishier and uh, he's going to be squishier and faster than Unica was. Uh, so, uh, yeah, he's not going to be able to take as many hits, and he's basically a harder mode for you than Unica's. I, I basically, if you want to go by the difficulty of the characters themselves and not just the difficulty that's put onto the game. Hugo is pretty much the easiest because he has range to him and he can get away quite easily. He is a bit squishier than Unica is, but he has range so he doesn't have to get close up to the enemies. And uh, although he is, I, I believe, in the description, he is slower than Unica, so it's harder to dodge boss attacks with him. But that doesn't matter too terribly much. And here the goddesses are using their magical powers. and They have purified the pearl and a turning stone. But uh, I still think Hugo is pretty much the easier mode because of his ranged. Uh, Unica is next because she's tankier and uh, she's tankier than Toll is, which is our third character. And then Toll is the hardest because he's squishy and I mean he is really fast, especially when you get his first ability, he can get super fast. But the way he plays, you have to be a lot more careful of your engagements. You can't just go all in like Unica can. Because he takes a lot of damage. But, yes. We're coming to the end. Of, we're at the end of the story. They're gonna go back up to Solomon's Shrine. And, uh, yeah, the world has been, well, the land of East has been cleansed. I really need to fix this chair so it isn't as squeaky. But just as with Hugo's story, um, there's some people that are staying behind instead of going back to Solomon Shrine. Unica, of course, and Hugo. Unica wants to protect the goddesses while the, while she's still in stone. While they're still in stone. As long as she can live, and uh, as long as she lives. And then, of course, M. She is going to stay with Hugo. And, uh, Rico. Rico's going to stay as well. Now, I have not played the other games, but, uh, I know from screenshots that Lady Fina and Lady Rhea are in the game. Of course, they're, that's kind of part of the, you know, they wake up and the Black Pearl is reactivated again and demons show up again. Pretty sure that's the point of the story. And so 
and they probably lost their memory or something. So I don't know if any of these characters show up again. But, uh... I'll have to play Yes 1 and 2 plus, I think it is. Yes 1 plus and 2 or something like this. 1 plus 2 or something like that. Yes. And then... C. But, uh... I've spent some... This is my most played game on Steam, pretty much. Simply because Steam won't track League of Legends. But I have... 40 hours into this game just from playing the three normal storylines and playing uh, uh, playing through for this Let's Play. And I don't really regret any of it. It's quite a fun game. We quite enjoy it. And so Solomon Shrine is going back into the sky. Well, higher into the sky, it was still in the sky. Hmm. But, yeah. And there's the tower. And here are the credits. I'm gonna watch the credits again. We're gonna watch it all three times. It's too lazy to edit it. Or to stop recording. But, uh, thank you all for watching, if you are watching still. And once again, the next episode will be the first episode of Toll's playthrough, which he has, which his is the true storyline, and you get his storyline by playing through the game once with one of the two other characters. So technically I could have gone straight to Toll after I played the Hugo playthrough, although I technically already had Toll unlocked at the very beginning. But that's a completely different story. So, once again, I'm going to say it again, thank you all for watching. This has been East Origin, the Unica playthrough, by me, Zarlin Gaming. Uh, if you liked this, uh, I guess you could leave it a like. Most people don't even watch this on my channel. Uh, after I finish Toll's playthrough, I'm gonna, I might as well get this off my chest now. After I finish Toll's playthrough, there probably won't be another Let's Play on this channel at all. I'm probably going to stick to reviews, lol commentaries, and stuff, and, and lol reviews and stuff like that. I need to get, I need lol replay to work properly in order so I can do uh, a lot more leak stuff. But that's besides the point. But thank you all for watching. And after tolls, there probably won't be another unless I get more support for stuff on this channel. I probably won't do another Let's Play on here. So, thank you all for watching if you did. I'm gonna say it thousands of times. I'm just doing this for fun. I couldn't care, I, I really couldn't care less. It's just, I'm putting up a lot of time and... It takes a lot of time and effort and I get maybe like three views. It makes me kinda sad, but you know. I, I think I'm just going to focus on my League stuff more from now on. And I might make a second channel for, for Let's Plays later on. But for now, we're sticking with East Origins is going to be my last one. Thank you for watching. Good night.